yes, he does have a point. China charges four times higher tariffs on average for U.S. products than the other way around. And even if we look at non-tariff barriers, which are very important nowadays, non-tariff barriers in China are higher than in the U.S. So adding those two up, he does have a point. With other countries, not as much, but with China, yes, he does. On a broad scale, we will have retaliation from the trade partners on a broad scale as well. And everybody will lose out. Maybe one country will lose out less than the other one, but it will have a negative effect on the economy of all participating countries. Well, Trump's strategy is to have negotiations on a bilateral basis and to get some more favorable terms of trade for the U.S. He has moved the U.S. in a smart way into that situation. Why? That's because he put in place tariffs on steel and aluminum for all countries, subsequently said, if you want to be exempted, negotiate with me on a bilateral basis. And he knows that on a bilateral basis, the U.S. Is, has the upper hand because the other countries depend more on demand from the U.S. for their products than the other way around. Where this is going to end, we don't know for sure, but I'm inclined to think that China will give in a little bit more on top of what they have been promising a couple of weeks ago, opening up the financial sector, opening up the automotive sector by lowering tariffs, and if they do some more, then Trump gets a result that is good for him in a run up to the midterm elections. So he can tell everybody, look what I'm doing on trade. I've got concessions from the South Koreans. I've got concessions from the Chinese. I'm working on my promise that I will try to protect your jobs and even try to bring back some jobs that were lost because of free trade. I would say so, yes. Of course, on the tariff side, we can see that the US charges a little lower tariffs on European exports than the other way around. But if we look at the non-tariff barriers, it's more difficult for Europe to export services and goods to the US than the other way around. So adding these two up, it levels out. Actually, yes, it's a very sensitive subject almost a taboo on this side of the ocean and the other side of the ocean as well. But if you look at what's going on, you see Donald Trump focusing on one thing, tariffs on cars, those being higher in Europe than in the US. But of course, there are many other products and services that have different levels of trade barriers. And if you want to deal, you've got to do it for many products and services at the same time. Only a small part of it. If we look at the big picture, then we have to say that if the US is able to negotiate better terms of trade with, for example, China, then this will bring down the deficit a bit. But the big problem is the overconsumption in the US. The US has been having a uh, overconsumption for decades now. So it needs to save more and spend less. And that is what really can bring down the U.S. trade deficit. And if we look at the current tax policy, the measures taken by Trump, Trump this is rather going to aggravate the situation than make it better. The risky part is, is that he's aiming very high and he knows that the U.S. has the upper hand, economically speaking, but if countries like China will let political prestige play an important role, then the negotiations can fail and we will see U.S. imposing tariffs, retaliation from other countries, and that would lead to a lose-lose situation for all economies involved.